Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I want to talk about getting right to repair across to a wider audience and the responsibility and role that my audience that I have is going to play in helping me accomplish this. As I said in many of my other videos, this is not something that I'm going to be able to do on my own. I will most certainly put the work in, I will put the effort in, I will put the organization in. But I'm not going to be able to get everything done on my own. There was a poll that was released to re that Nathan Proctor at US Perg showed me, great guy when it comes to doing all this right to repair stuff, and it showed that while many people supported right to repair way more than the people that didn't, the largest category of them all was the over 53% of people that went, what's right to repair? Just having a YouTube channel with 1.56 million subscribers is not going to do anymore because there's another 320 or 324 million people in the country that are not subscribed. Many people that have never heard of Right to Repair have no idea what it is. In a recent video, I was going through lists of suggestions from all of you of people that I should speak to about Right to Repair, people who I should you know, try to do a collaboration with, get on the show, this, that, and the other. And some of them have gotten back to me. It's been great. Did a show with Ben Heck recently. That was awesome. He's a cool dude. I uh, Before I even had a chance to message Linus with my offer to try and sponsor one of his episodes or something, he did a, a entire video on Right to Repair and pointed me out for free, which I am incredibly, incredibly grateful, humbled, honored happened. I am happy that that happened. But at the end of the day, no insult to Linus, no insult to me. That's not going to be enough. We're going to need more momentum. We're going to need more awareness. And I have reached out to many of these people. 99% of them so far have not gotten back to me. You know, there are certain creators where I've reached out to them offering five figures of my own money, not GoFundMe money, to pay for a sponsored ad spot in their videos just to get right to repair in front of people. And I haven't heard back. And I don't blame them for not getting back to me. I have an email inbox that you know, I'll get through to the point where I have zero unread emails. I wake up the next day, 4,000 unread emails. So I understand that larger creators than me are going to have that problem to a larger extent. And at the end of the day, whether it is a television show, a news show, radio show, podcast, newspaper, they cover what their audience is interested in having covered. And that audience is you. So if you want to see me on your favorite podcast, if you want to see Right to Repair discussed in your favorite news show or newspaper or student newspaper, whatever, make it happen. Make it happen. My email is contact at fighttorepair.org, and I will pledge that I will read every single email that goes to contact at fighttorepair.org, and I will make time to speak with any of the journalists, podcast hosts, television show hosts, etc., that are willing to speak with me about this topic at their convenience, not mine. I'll take time out of my day. I'll reschedule my day so that I could show up in any podcast, any news show, any speak with any journalist that you think would be worthwhile to speak with. But by all means, you're allowed as a viewer to set up something. You're allowed to email someone and say, would you like to speak to this person about right to repair? We find this interesting and CC me on it. I'm more than happy to set something up. Now, one other thing I want to mention as a result of this push is what my goal is. My goal is not to endorse the thoughts, the political viewpoints, or anything else of the people that I speak to. My goal is to get across right to repair to a larger audience so that more people understand what's going on, more people can be aware of it so that they can be, so that they can be informed when anti-right to repair ads start coming out against right to repair so that they know at least what the story is before they go to vote one way or the other. I'm not here to endorse the views of anyone that I speak to on social issues, healthcare issues, gun rights, immigration, uh, taxation, uh, any of this other stuff. I am, in this case, a one-issue advocate. So you're probably going to see me speak to people that you don't like. And I'm going to read a post that I may uh, reply that I recently made in a YouTube comment to give you an idea. Here's the thing. You think he's a grifter. One or two million people listen to him. That means if I speak on his show, that's one to two million people that now know what right to repair is that didn't before. It's not about the interviewer or their views or the person I'm speaking to. Rather, it is about changing the minds and inspiring their audience that otherwise would not know about this issue. Don't miss the forest for the trees. This is not the first person that I will speak to that you or other members of my audience do not like. Further, this may not be the first person that I speak to that I personally do not like but I must not miss the forest for the trees. If I only speak to people that my audience like, I would speak to no one, because with an audience of over one million people, it is impossible to find an individual that everyone in my audience agrees I should speak to and who I should not speak to. 
I want to be clear here. I am not trying to get a specific politician elected. I am not advocating for a wide variety of policies. In this case, I am very much so a one-issue advocate with regards to Repair Preservation Group. I advocate for right to repair. I am not getting into the weeds of immigration, gun control, taxation, health care, COVID, Dr. Seuss, Colin Kaepernick, or the rest of the culture war. I believe this is an issue that should unite all people from all sides of the political aisle, including people that disagree about all of the above. I will talk to Ron Paul or Bernie Sanders, to Trump or Cuomo. It doesn't matter to me. This issue should have support on every side of the political aisle, and I will speak to anyone willing to listen. And if you are willing to set up a meeting with anyone that is willing to listen, that you believe will help influence the campaign going forward for Right to Repair, get more people involved, and maybe, just maybe, when we do a poll this time next year, 53% of the people polled won't go, uh, what's Right to Repair? I'm more than happy to do that, and I'm asking, begging for your help to make that happen. Because without your help, I'm just one dude. I'm not successful at this because of my actions. I'm successful because I have the help of 1.56 million people that click the red button because they like what I'm doing. And I can't do it without you. My email is contact at fightsrepair.org. And if you'd like to help me set something up, I'm more than happy to work with who you help me set things up with so that we can have a conversation and get this across to more people. Further, if you are someone who is good with PR and setting up these types of meetings and creating this type of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? social buzz and getting, you know, getting a message across to, to the news and the media and everything else, we could use someone like you. Contact at fighttorepair.org. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you on the next video. Bye now. I know you wait until I end the video to look up at me. You're such a good little kitty. Who's a good little blackberry? Good girl.